I have a friend who was once visiting some friends in Bolivia in the equatorial zone, in the, in the Amazonian zone, and they were having dinner once in the house. And after dinner, they put this, the chairs back, light a cigarette, to smoke, talk, and a big spider came down from the city to the table. And my friend said that when she saw this, she said, oh, the spider, she was frightened. But the landlady said, oh, don't worry, she comes every night to take some food from the table after we have finished and then go. So this corresponds to the behavior through which the other, the spider, arises as a legitimate other with this human, and the humans arise as legitimate others with the spider. In this terms, I'm using the word out. So, as I use it to connote a phenomenon, I can explain that phenomenon scientifically without the word love interfering with my scientific explanation. And the explanation of that phenomenon has to do with the possible history of recurrent interactions and with which these systems drift together in coexistence if they enter in recurrent interaction without destroying each other. Now the beauty of it is that living systems are such that you can do this practically with all of them in the domains in which they exist. If I want to live in relations that bring forth the legitimization of another in coexistence with myself, and want and need an honest language, then maybe the biology of love is an emotion that will invite a new honest language. Hmm. I claim that the biology of love is central because I claim that love is the emotion that constitutes the social. But at the same time, I claim not all human relations are social relations. Not all human interactions are social interactions. I claim, and I want to make it so, that it be understood that what I say is that there is a fundamental difference in the course of human relations depending on the emotion under which it takes place. If it is love, it is the behavior, the action that constitutes the other as a legitimate other, in consistent with itself. One has that which in daily life, not in professional life, in daily life one calls social. And the other emotions have other dynamics of relations. They have work, hierarchical organizations, commercial relations, other things can appear, and other emotions. And my claim is that language could not have a reason without sufficient intimacy in living together in beings, our ancestors, which were not hunters and could not be hunters because they were not, they had not the, the bodyhood for being hunters. They were beings of about this size, they did not have claws, they did not have so they, they were gatherers and scavengers. 